you over there on his table over there. I'm very excited. This is an exciting firework of a legal variety. Also, I'm doing a stand-up comedy and music show October 19th. Flyers in the back of that, trying to raise money to get to New York for a, a talent competition next summer. Fireworks, legal time, exciting things. So, uh, and, and keep going. By May, we're going to have a real good report and signs, maybe double fine areas about fireworks. It's going down. Fireworks are going down in this area. So, thank you.
neighborhood council to attend last time. So I have a form and we actually need to know by today. So I'll leave the form to you guys to fill out if you're interested in filling out. And then uh, someone can fax it over to me by tomorrow if possible. So here's the form if you'd like to participate. And then secondly, uh, we're going to be having our second tree giveaway in El Suino on Saturday. So these are five gallon, five feet fruit trees. So that's almost about my height. Um, fruit trees consist of anything from apple, avocado, plum, cherry. Um, I believe there was some pear. The last one we did was at Superior in Highland Park, and it was really successful. Um, trees went, I like to say, 100, 100 trees per hour. Um, and we only get 200 trees. So the line starts forming at about 7.30. I suggest if you're interested, get there by 8. Uh, event starts at 9. All residents should have gotten this flyer as well. If not, I put some in the back and I will also leave them uh, to pass around. Uh, this is going to be at the Food for Less. Again, that's this Saturday. The assembly member will be there for about two hours. Um, it's also our type of community meet and greet. So we've partnered with the city to fulfill the former mayor's initiative of Million Trees LA. And um, again, it's, it's a great giveaway. Five gallon, five foot fruit trees. It starts at nine. Just getting there a little early, you do want to guarantee yourself a tree. Um, all details are on the flyer, but basically you just need to either be a resident or own property in Los Angeles and bring verification through an ID or driver's license or DWP utility bill. So any of the three I just named would suffice. Okay, yes. Can you repeat the date and time of the first event and the name of the event? The Huffer? Yes. It's the Northeast LA Health and Community Fair. And it's on our website. Uh, uh, that's on Saturday, Saturday, October 8th, yeah. That is from 10 to 4. 10 to 2. 10 to 2, sorry, thank you. What day? Oh, I lost. Uh, October 19th. Saturday, October 19th. And I'll have flyers for you guys for that one as well. I know we, we uploaded all the stuff. Okay. So we have it on our calendar. Yeah. If you want our LA City. Yes. And we're also, I mean, the main purpose of these health fairs or to get information about Harvard, California, and uh, have the providers actually there in person. Um, if you do have any questions about to us, can get everyone covered. Uh, there will be a fine in post if you're not insured by January. So it's a great opportunity to get that information and talk to real life people rather than an operator. In addition to services. The website doesn't crash? I heard about that. I tried it myself. It's really slow. So
your stakeholders. Uh, I did provide a written response uh, that I made copies of. Sorry for not making copies for everybody this evening because uh, on my way to the printer shop when I got there, they were closed, so I had to go back to my house and make copies, so I was short on time. And of course, I want to get your time manager. I didn't prepare a written statement for everybody, but if you do see one on your table, I put some on each of the table over here. So I have a highlighter at the bottom, and what is indicated as response to funding concerns. I may have an extra copy over here. One extra copy, I don't know if anybody else wants to read them. Did you get a copy that way? Mm -hmm. You guys got a copy of something over there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a big wire to get a copy there. Okay, just so you can take a look at it. Uh, basically, what happened at the meeting is done, uh, asked several questions. Some questions were posed by Tony, some were posed by the auditor, some were posed by the town staff. Um, prior to me getting there, most of the questions um, seem to have been answered within the departmental research, meaning finding out some of the receipts, some of the paperwork, and under misunderstanding the paperwork that was turned in. What I did is uh, I basically directed a specific question which was posed, and uh, I won't read the entire thing, but it's some of the issues here were never part of the cause, but it is my best interest to make an effort to answer all the questions so that it's understood why and what's going on with our neighborhood council. The issue of outstanding items, payments, or unpaid responsibility stems from two concerns. When they use the word outstanding, uh, it might have been sent out an email, it might have been directed from Dunn, it uh, might have been a term we use here, outstanding payments. One of the outstanding payments was for $500. I'm sure you guys all remember Felix Hernandez as a stakeholder coming every single month for at least a year and saying, you guys, you know what? You funded a program for the karate activity at El Serena Recreation Center. We did this well over a year ago. They were still told that it's outstanding because the board made an obligation to make this payment, but the board never paid it. The way this came about is, I was the president back at that time, and we had approved to, to fund this program, but we had approved to fund it out of the next fiscal cycle, because we didn't have enough funds that year, and it was back in like 2011. What had happened is we had the transition of board members. So when the new board was seated, I became the treasurer now, and I felt compelled to meet our obligation and make the payment for the karate for $500. But I was guided by budget and finance committee members, I was guided by the vice president and by the president to say, you know what, that's the last board's promise. They're the ones who said they were going to give you 500 bucks. This is this board, we're not going to pay it. And not that we don't want to, but just the bottom line is, that was the last board's decision. And we're a new board and we make a new decision, and those $500 will don't pay it. So as a treasurer, I was sort of stuck between differences, understanding whether I got paid a debt to a community member or to a community program, or listen to my committee members and leaders to say, don't do it. The bottom line is I didn't do it. So Dunn's wondering why I didn't pay the $500. Basically the answer is, we could pay it. All we gotta do is re-agendize it, reaffirm the previous board's position, and then the paperwork will be submitted and the park will be receiving $500 for their uh, karate activities. I'm sure Louis Sanchez would be very pleased, and I'm sure Felix Sanchez would be very pleased, and I'll feel a little bit more comfortable that we met our obligation and commitment as a board to fund a community program. So something that says it's outstanding is really not reflective of the treasurer's neglect or not duty, not doing his duty. It's just a, a, a series of circumstances that I was sort of pushed to say, don't pay. And I heard the same stakeholders just like many of you did come every single month to say, why aren't you paying? Why aren't you paying? Why aren't you paying? And of course, all the finger pointing comes to me. That's one of the issues. The second issue, as outstanding again, because those are the words that uh, I guess referred in the notes and emails and whatever's going on, is a payment for the Senior Citizen Center, which we're at here this evening. That payment is for $800. What happened is the board had a great idea, I had a great idea, and it sounds logical. Logical is one thing, practical is the other. Practical, we couldn't make it happen. Logical is we want to pay the Senior Citizen Center in advance, $800. The board voted for it. It's, you know, we, we, we use the services here every month. But what happened is when I started getting the invoices from the Senior Citizen Center, I believe I have them in my list over here, they come in an envelope of increments, looks like this, Department of Recreation and Parks, Department of Recreation and Parks, AT&T bills. But these statements that come from the rec center are for 70 bucks, because they only charge us $70 each meeting time. And they don't charge us for the building, but it's for staffing hours. So the difficulty I had was trying to prove and 
validate and assure that our board made a demand for $800, but I only had invoices of 70 bucks. Not one, two, three, but 70 even five times is only 350 bucks. I couldn't equate the relationship between a, an approved expenditure of $800 and invoices only come up to $350. So what I did is I came to the guy and I said, you know what, please give me an invoice for $800. Make it easy. I got an invoice for $800. Bucks. The board said pay you $800. Bucks. It's done. The gentleman says, I can't pay you. I can't make an invoice in advance. You guys have, you know, what the place burns down and you guys don't have a room here. I'm building you anyways. And the policy of the Rec and Parks is, we don't bill you in advance. So I was stuck in a hard spot again. I was like, well, what do I do? I didn't pay him. Because I didn't have the matching invoices to equate for the board's permission to spend $800. So another easy resolution to fix this is we're going to start working on an interdepartmental transfer, arrange the Department of Different Empowerment and the Department of Rec and Parks, and they'll get an electronic transfer every month. Now we don't have to worry about missing our payments. We don't have to worry about trying to pay in advance. We don't have to worry about trying to uh, account for all these invoices right here that don't match a, a documentation. They send the invoice, it gets 70 bucks, they get 70 bucks, and it's done interdepartmentally. To me, another easy fix, which is true. But of course, all the finger pointing going to this particular situation, why we didn't pay an outstanding payment, is directed to me. So these are some of the, the issues that we all hear, but unless you actually know all the details and realize all the facts, you can't really make a decision to say that the, the treasurer failed in some certain services. Some of the other things, that's just the first two. Some of the other things that I'm going to go through on page three. Uh, oh, now, now they started using the word incomplete documentation. Fair enough, the resolutions weren't signed. The incomplete documentation was specifically related to one issue when I was sitting there at the meeting was they received a demand warrant for $500 to pay the vice president a board member's reimbursement. And we confirmed, we checked our paperwork, we know the event, Dunn was there, and we know that the vice president was not gonna receive a $500 reimbursement because some of those purchases were made on the purchase card, and the reimbursement was, I think, to drop down to like $150 or $200. How did the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment get an incomplete demand warrant? At one of the Budget and Finance Committee meetings, which I'm sure not everyone attended, but what happened is a stakeholder, which I won't mention their name, came to the meeting and they had about five of these demand warrants printed out. You could get them online, they're on the internet, you just go check the Dunn website. But what this stakeholder did is he took it upon himself to print all of these demand warrants and say, look how easy it is. Look how cinchy, you know, how simple it is to make a demand warrant. All you gotta do is sign and turn it in. But little did he know that the demand warrant he processed, of course, is not valid. It's for the wrong dollar amount. So what I did is when I got that demand warrant for safety services or security, what I did is I just grabbed it, as many as I could, because I didn't want them out in the community. I folded it and I put it in a folder. Because I need to hide that document. It's almost like money. It's considered a paper check. Of course, we didn't sign it, though. But what happened is that folder, or this folded document, which is a real demand warrant, was in a folder that I turned in with a lot of receipts to the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment. So when they open up the folder, they say, oh my goodness, there's a demand warrant right here to pay $500 to Ms. Andreno. It's not signed. There's no supporting documentation. It's incomplete. We cannot pay these $500. My answer is, don't pay them. Ms. Andreno already got her reimbursement, and the other purchase for the single my event was done through the purchase card. This demand warrant should have been burnt, thrown in the trash, shredded, discarded, a mistake that I failed at to say, you know what, let me get this out of the hands of the public and more so let me get this out of the hands of the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment. That was where I failed at because they got something they weren't really never supposed to get because we processed funding already two ways, through the reimbursement, through a lower dollar amount, and through the purchase card. So when it, again, when someone would say that there is incomplete documentation, some it, it is incomplete, but some of it was just a term saying it's incomplete and after you say, oh, you know what, Everything turned out pretty good. Incomplete, scratch it out. Because it's not like I was trying to fund another board member twice. Or I wasn't trying to submit paperwork that wasn't approved by the board and say, you know what, I'm going to sneak this in and see what happens. So yes, it was incomplete, but it's something that should have never been exposed. And to say it once again, it was a physical document that was prepared by a stakeholder. 
We cannot have that. That's part of the reason why I continue to say when we prepare documentation, we give them in writing, but we don't put everything out on the internet. People do crazy stuff to manipulate our information. They're already trying to process or in turn try to process information by using uh, city documentation, which is like a demand or a paper check, and it could get wild. It could get really crazy. You could get like, forged signatures on them. You know, who knows what could happen? So I would say don't print all this stuff out. These are personal documentation. You guys got copies. I made copies, but just to help take care of myself, I put void on them. Uh, the only one that's not going to say void is the one we have to sign and turn into done. But some people use the word draft. Some people will write void. Some people will put cancel. But if it's out there, you know, with the day of the internet, you never know what's going to happen. So that was an honest and fair mistake saying this document got turned into done. And yes, it was incomplete, but it wasn't something they were supposed to receive. One of the, uh, oh, there was some item that I was unable to pay. The reason is, is the board had proved to purchase a generator, some identifying cert equipment for cert members in the community, and some additional FRS radios that I have uh, right over here back here. Maybe someone grabbed it already. Here you go. Items like this, which we use for neighborhood watch, we use for emergency preparedness. But what had happened is during that time of the last month or two, there was deadlines. The deadline for the demand warrant process or paper check was sometime in May. The deadline for purchasing card was sometime in June. What had happened is throughout the year, which is from January through May, as a treasurer, I got the purchase card in my pocket. I had exhausted the amount of funds capable of being used on the purchase card. So what happened is when I would go to now to a new <coughs> vendor, try to swipe the card, it would say declined or not valid or payment was not processed. So what I had to do is go to the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment and say, you know what, we're in the last two weeks. We're in the last three weeks. We need to get an upload or an increase in uh, funding to be applied to the purchase card so that I could go to these different locations and vendors and make sure that when I process a payment, it goes through and we meet the will of the board. Well, what happened is the requirement imposed by Dunn is for us to give you the upload or the increase, you have to validate it with an invoice. And the invoice says this much, no problem. We'll increase it by that much. You didn't put three invoices this much, no problem. We'll increase the card this much. And I don't know if it was just a restriction because of the, the immediate time delay or time frame, or this is something that happens all year long when you have to re request a dollar amount beyond what you've already spent. Nonetheless, it's done would not upload any money unless I could prove this is what it costs. Well, when I go to the SLS company, they say, you know what? I can't give you an invoice in advance if you're not buying anything. The goods are still right here in my shop. When you have money on the card, come back and buy it, just like any other store would. So I couldn't get an invoice from these people. So I can't get an invoice to validate a purchase. Dunn won't upload an amount unless I have an invoice. So in my mind, I'm thinking, why sweat over it? Just chill, relax, and in July, we get a new funding upload. Then I go, just like SOS said, the board already approved, pay it. All I do is go back to the vendor and say, look, now I got money on the card. Simple, swipe it, it gets paid, the board gets three meets our requirement, and then the process for the event, or for the, for the vendor, is simplified. I didn't have no headaches or I'm trying to do any magic, because I know I'm a master at taking care of situations. Is this going to be in the class that we're going to have it? No. Oh, you know what? Right. How come you didn't buy these things? Of course, there's many other questions. You could ask any questions you have all night. The main reason that I feel and why we're having difficulties uh, within our board, and it's not just the treasurer who didn't take care of their obligation, because there were three components. One is the budget. The budget was approved, and we have a copy, and maybe Doug can see it. But there was also an outreach plan. The treasurer and Anna